Welcome to Where Her Heart Speaks, a show designed to challenge and disrupt ineffective thoughts and behaviors to help you not only embody peace, joy, calm, and certainty, but also to help you live the life you've always dreamed of living. Where Her Heart Speaks with Coach Catherine begins now. Why is it that, according to statistics, only 9% of adults keep their resolutions all year long? Why is it that 23% of the people who make New Year's resolutions quit within the first week of the year? Why is it that 80% of people who make New Year's resolutions quit somewhere between late January and the middle of February. And I'm gonna say an even greater question is why do people continue to create New Year's resolutions? Hi there, it's Coach Catherine. And I don't know if you've already purchased your 52 week journal planner, the Sensational Living 52 week journal and planner but I want to help you to ensure that you're not one of the 80% or the 23% of people who are failing to continue on with their New Year's resolutions. I want to help you ensure that whatever it is that you desire to do, not only at the beginning of the year, but throughout the year, you will actually have a tool that is going to help you to do that thing. So if you've not yet purchased your copy of the Sensational Living 52-Week Inspirational Journal and Planner, I want to encourage you to do that. Each week includes an inspirational message, a space for capturing your thoughts, writing what it is that you're grateful for, and setting weekly intentions for each area of your life, even (laughs) connecting with friends. In this journal planner, you get to manifest your thoughts by addressing them with intentional effort. You can get the Sensational Living 52-Week Inspirational Journal and Planner by going to www.katherinejames forward slash shop. And then I want to say welcome and welcome back. I am Katherine James, international speaker, best-selling author, trauma-informed coach, and your host for this show, Where Her Heart Speaks. Again, I'm going to say Happy New Year. Happy New Year. I do hope that your new year has started off as well as you had hoped. It's said that The new year represents a clean slate and it brings forth this type of newness and hope for individuals. I believe that there is something exciting about people all around the world celebrating together. There's something exciting about being a part of a mass movement or this mass motivation or or this collected motivation that spreads all throughout the world at the same time, (laughs) even if it's for a short period of time. I think that for many, as we talk about New Year's resolutions, it feels good to be able to share what your resolutions are when you're asked. It's, it's almost as though you have planned, you are being intentional and you are setting yourself up for a great year ahead. So it feels good to be able to answer the question when someone asks, well, did you make a New Year's resolution and what is it? It feels good even if it's the same one that you've shared last year. 
or the same one that you shared the year before that. I, I'm just going to say <laughs> there is definitely something to be said about persistence. The new year brings hope. We, we probably could agree on that. The new year brings hope. And I believe that it reignites the flame of forgotten dreams. There is a period, there's, there's almost like this energy that just fields the entire world and it fuels individuals. And it's almost like holding them up. And as they're being held up, they can believe again for something that maybe they had given up hope on. As they're being held up, they can see the possibilities again. And I think that that this is what happens at the beginning of the new year. People are hopeful. And they're hopeful that resolutions will get them back on track. They're hopeful that resolutions will help them achieve their long-awaited dreams. Dreams of being thinner, dreams of being richer, dreams of being healthier. Dreams that are fairly reasonable and seemingly attainable. People are hopeful that life, the life they lived at the end of the prior year could be somehow made better simply because we're now in a new year. And I get it. I get it. I too used to make New Year's resolutions and oftentimes it was the same one <laughs> every year. I was going to work out more. That was my New Year's resolution every single year. I was going to work out more. In 2017, I set or made that New Year's resolution. I was intentional. So I didn't just say this is what it was going to be. I went so far as to create a plan. I said at 7 a.m., five days a week, I was going to work out. I went further. I was very specific. I said Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 7 a.m., I would walk for 60 minutes. On Tuesdays and Thursdays at 7 a.m., I would do weightlifting for 30 minutes. I was intentional. I was even more intentional because I would set my clothes out the night before. And things went well, <laughs> like most, for the first couple of weeks. They went well. But then things started to happen. One morning, uh, I woke up and it was raining. Or one morning, I was awakened by a phone call or one morning I got up and my body was sore. Things started to happen. And before long, I was back to not working out. That was 2017. 2018, I did not make a New Year's resolution. And I have not made a New Year's resolution since then. I want to share with you what I choose to do instead and how I've been able to remain hopeful, not just at the beginning of the year, but throughout the year. And how I have been able to have a greater success rate for achieving both big and small dreams. Small dreams like working out every day. That's that's pretty small for me. Or big dreams like purchasing a new home. 
That's a big dream. Or starting my business, sustaining my business. Those are bigger dreams for me. So for 2024, and I don't typically focus on words for the year or phrases of for the year, but 2023 ended very different for me. And I'll talk about that in a minute. But for 2024, my word for the year is expansion. Expansion. What I've come to understand is growth is needed to achieve New Year's resolutions. (laughs) Growth is needed to achieve our dreams or our goals. There has to be some level of personal growth. And I believe that too many are trying to do new things from their old way, from their old way of believing, from their old way of thinking, from their old way of being. But new ways require greater capacity. I remember years ago, um, Huh, I don't remember the year, but it's probably been about 28 years ago. <laughs> so 28 years ago, I lived in my starter home and my starter home was 900 square feet. And I, I'm going to give you this for context and you can imagine the space. Um, it was 900 square feet, two bedrooms, one bath. I have always wanted a baby grand piano and I had an opportunity to purchase a baby grand piano. So I did. And I put (laughs) this baby grand piano in the living room of my 900 square foot home. And you could probably imagine that piano consumed the space. And instead of it being this beautiful instrument that I saw it to be, it was actually an eyesore because it was the only thing you saw when you stepped foot in the door. And then you had the rest of the furniture along the walls, but it it took up the whole room. And when I purchased my next home, which was more than twice the size of the first home. And I brought the baby grand piano into my newer home. It didn't consume the space. It instead complemented the space. And when you then walked into the home, you didn't see only the piano. You saw what I had always envisioned a living space and a beautiful piece of furniture in that baby grand piano. I want to say new ways require expansion. New ways require expansion. So many times we as human beings attempt to put things that are too big into small spaces and they consume us. But in order to expand, there has to be both an increase and a a decrease. In order to expand, in order for there to be expansion, there has to be both an increase, an increasing of something and a decreasing of something. So the end of 2023, right around November, probably somewhere around Thanksgiving, a holiday we celebrate here in the U.S., typically the third Thursday, I believe it is, (laughs) of November, um, Right around that time, so not yet December, November has not yet come to a complete end, I received a message, divine message, to take the month of December off, to pause 
for the entire month of December. And so I had to shuffle, juggle, uh, move some things around by way of my schedule, uh, by way of my clients, so that I could be off the entire month of December. Now, what was interesting about being off was it wasn't just that I was going to be off, but the message that I got was that I was also supposed to be still, be still and quiet. So do nothing and spend time in quiet. <laughs> so no sound. Now, a lot of people would have a hard time with that. And I'm going to say to you that spending time in quiet was easy because I am not an individual who likes a lot of noise. And often, um, any given day, I am sitting in quiet. What was hard was being still. So my decrease, the decrease that was necessary for expansion was... A decrease in work. I had to be still. A decrease in my daily routines and activity. There was none. <laughs> so my activity was walking. I, I walk through my house. Or I'm sitting. Listening to downloads from my creator. Downloads from my inner being. My decrease came by way of closing out the noise. External messages had to be eliminated. And as a result, there was an increased capacity, a space for increased capacity. Space was opened up, like all these things were taken out. And then that allowed for space more things to be put in. So there was a decrease. And then there was an increase, increase in stillness, as I talked about, increase in quiet, as I talked about, and an increase in surrendering. Surrendering, letting go. I am, if you've been with me, you've heard me say, I am a recovering perfectionist and I am a recovering overachiever, overachiever. And, and I truly do not know what it means to, or did not know what it meant to really surrender, like not make anything happen. That's what I do. That's how I, I have moved for so long in my life. If I wanted something, I knew how to make things happen. And I was called during the month of December to just surrender and allow things to be. So what happened is this opened up or opened me up to a way of being that was not possible before I went into this space. It, it just wasn't possible because my way of being before I went into this space was the old way of knowing how I existed. Being in quiet, yes, <laughs> but being in action most, at most of my waking hours. And doing what was necessary to make things happen the way I thought they should. Now, it didn't always work out that way. <laughs> but I thought that what I was doing was going to make them happen. So being in quiet, being still, surrendering, closing out the external noise provided an opportunity for me to learn a new way of existing. And I could not have done that, but for being in that space for 30 days. Now, I will say that piling more and more and more on your plate can feel like increased capacity because we're holding more, right? That can feel like increased capacity until it's not. 
until burnout sets in. Doing more can feel like we're growing until we don't. Where overwhelm and overload sets in. And those are the things that I was doing. That's what I was doing every year when I made that New Year's resolution to move more, to work out more. I was just piling something else up on on my plate, on an already full plate. I was just doing more and believing that I was I was growing, believing that I was expanding, believing that I was going to achieve that desired outcome. Just adding to another thing, <laughs> adding another thing on an already full plate. That was the old way of existing. Expansion is not possible. Existing in an old way without giving self permission to both decrease and increase. And I want to say expansion takes time. And I'll just have you to think of a rubber band. You can stretch that rubber band as far as possible. But once that tension is released, it'll return back to the shape and size that it was. But here's the thing. If you continue to stretch it over and over again, it will eventually expand to a new shape and a new size. Expansion takes time. Smart business owners know the potential, the potential fallout of expanding too quickly. They know and realize that there are lessons to learn along the way that may be missed if you expand too quickly. They know and realize that they may not have the resources needed for sustainability. They know and realize that there is no time to analyze and strategize. So while expansion is necessary, I just don't think that it can be rushed. (laughs) Uh, Especially if you're in a space where life is still happening. Why can't it be rushed? Leaving the old requires the building of new neural pathways in both our brain and our nervous system. Because if not, we'll be like that rubber band. As soon as the tension is released, you'll go back to being who you were. So it requires the building of new neural pathways and that doesn't happen overnight. And again, especially if your lifestyle doesn't allow you to pause for a period of time, a good period of time. If your lifestyle doesn't allow you to Just be able to be with yourself in quiet. If you're still having to go to work, if you're still having to parent, if you are still having to be spouse, which that I did, (laughs) we found a workaround. But if your lifestyle, if life is still going and you're not able to just pause, it is going to require a period of time for you to develop new a new way of believing, a new way of thinking, and a new way of being. Successful resolutions and achieved dreams are more possible with expansion. They're more possible, more possible with expansion, expansion of your beliefs, expansion of your thoughts, expansion of your inner self. 
And I just found <laughs> at the end of my 30 day, what I called mini sabbatical, with that expansion comes hope, clarity, and capacity. And I say hope, and I, I actually want to change that as I reflect. Rather than hope, there is a knowing. There is a deep knowing that whatever it is that you desire is possible and will come to pass. The clarity in what it is you want, the steps you will take to get what it is you want, and how you need to move, who needs to be in your space, what external noise needs to come in, what external noise needs to be closed out, what support system you need to establish. And I, I'm saying need, um, and I, I don't too much like the word need. There is a energetic drain, I feel, in the word need. So I'm going to change need to want. What support you want to establish to help you get to where it is that you desire to go. And capacity. Capacity. I, I can't say enough about capacity. And I think this takes me back to that word expansion. In this expansive state, the capacity is so wide open. It's so large that the stress that was felt, the anxious energy, the lack or thought of not attaining that was subtle but present prior to these 30 days of quiet is gone. <laughs> the capacity is bring it all on. Whatever it is that um, is necessary to be and do who I was created to be, what I was created to do, there's just space for it. There's just space. There's space or capacity for expanding my thinking. There's space and capacity for expanding my belief system. There's space and capacity for taking action. There's space and capacity for expanding who I am, who I've been. Let me say it that way. Who I am is always who I am. Who I've been showing up as versus who I truly am. Now, here's the thing. We are all different. <laughs> so what was required for me may not be required for you, 100%. I do believe that there's definitely um, something important about getting in quiet space and closing out the noise. I know that that is, is vital because there's so much information coming at us. We can lose sight of what's somebody else's and what's actually ours. So to come back and understand what's actually ours um, is done in the quiet times. But what I did or was called to do may not be what you will be called to do. So I want to invite you as you think about New Year's resolutions where we started, as you think about your dreams, dreams that probably were there long before you set a New Year's resolution this year in 2023, I mean, 2024 or 2023, dreams that are in you, 
that somehow get pushed to the back burner, dreams that are in you, that you maybe have stopped believing were possible for you to achieve. As you think about expansion, understanding that there is always room for growth. There is always space and time to eliminate, release things that no longer serve us, beliefs, behaviors, thinking that no longer serve us. There's always room for that. And when we're able to release those things, we open up room for those things that are going to serve us, that are going to support us and get us to the place that we truly desire to be. It's different for all of us. And I want to encourage you to find yours, find yours, find your way of expansion, find what it means for you to live in a state of expansion, to be in a state of expansion and what it will produce for you. What is it going to produce for you? So if you find yourself (laughs) in that space or in the category of the 23% of people who quit their New Year's resolutions within the first week, you've already fallen off. We are beyond the first week. If you find that you are one of those people or if you're one of those people who might be in the 80%, where we are now mid-January and you just fell fell off or um, you are noticing that it's not as exciting as it was on January 1. If you're one of those people, know that it's not about a New Year's resolution. It is about you being able to live your life every single day of the year with a joy and an excitement that is always available. That joy and excitement that we experience on January 1 and probably that first week of January doesn't have to end. Doesn't have to end. So I want to invite you to decide whether you want to stop there or if you want to keep going. Or maybe you didn't jump on that bandwagon and you've just been in this place of it is what it is and I'm just going to accept this being my way of living even though I truly don't desire it. I want to invite you to choose differently. Choose to give yourself permission to expand Expand wherever you are, expand from this place to your desired way of living. If that is something that sounds foreign to you, if maybe you are thinking, yes, I want to expand, but I'm not sure where to start. I will invite you to schedule a free 30-minute clarity call with me by going to www.calendly.com forward slash Coach Catherine. And let's have a conversation about what that looks like for you. And each week with each episode, as I close, I close with simply a short prayer, my desire, a prayer for you. And my prayer for you is simply that you would release the idea that a new year brings new hope and embrace the idea that hope is available for you every single day. Embrace the idea that your dreams, your desires are available for you every single day. Embrace the idea 
that expansion is possible. And as I close, I want to remind you to go to the place from where your heart speaks and listen. I also want to remind you that in this life, we get to choose. So choose to live a sensational life. Peace and blessings. Thank you for listening to Where Her Heart Speaks with Coach Catherine, where Catherine aims to challenge and disrupt ineffective thoughts and behaviors to help you not only embody peace, joy, calm, and certainty, but also help you live the life you've always dreamed of living. Follow Catherine on Facebook and Instagram at I am Catherine James and visit www.catherinejames.com. Remember to live the life of your dreams. You must go within and return to the place where your heart speaks.